Hi guys, my crew here. This is my sinkholes guide. I thought I'd make this sinkholes guide. Now I've got a 1 to 99 slash 120 dungeoneering guide as well. There'll be a link to my dungeoneering guide in the description if you're interested in that. But this video is just all about sinkholes and a way to get fast and easy daily dungeoneering XP with not even that much effort required. I personally got to 99 Dungeoneering and all my levels after 99 just by doing sinkholes here and there and the daily challenge. Sinkholes are really, really underrated and more people should do them as they're so good for Dungeoneering. Not only do they give you loads of XP, they're actually really useful for tokens as well. So what are sinkholes? Obviously, most of you will know what sinkholes are, but there will be some of you that are new to the game or just coming back that don't know what sinkholes are. Sinkholes are a daily distraction and diversion you can do twice a day. Sinkholes run every half past the hour game time. For example, they'll run at XX30 on every hour. So it'd be 10.30, 11.30, 12.30 and so on. A sinkhole spawn lasts long enough for you to do both of your daily uses in one spawn. You can exit the sinkhole at the end and then re-enter the sinkhole after you finish that first one to then do the second one before the sinkhole lockout closes for that spawn at that half past of the hour. So being able to do both in one allows it to be a really easy daily D&D as well because you actually have to only go and do it once a day even though you're going to do it twice a day. Sinkholes always give Dungeoneering tokens but at the end you have a chance to win lamps, 4 XP or more tokens on top of what you have already been given. You can also use the D&D reset tokens to reset sinkholes once a day. You just use your daily reset token and then it comes up with a list and you pick sinkholes. That means you can do up to four sinkholes a day for major XP. Once you get to Daemonheim with your Ring of Kinship, you can right click Talzar, teleport with him. Once you teleport with Talzar, he'll take you to the sinkhole. The sinkhole's already spawned on mine because I was a little bit late. So if we hop toward 134, 134 is the sinkhole's world. So you'll jump down the sinkhole. You can teleport from Talzar five minutes before the half pass of the hour so 25 pass and then you need to find Garajo here if you right click you'll be able to find Garajo on the list and then you want to enter dungeon with him you wait here with everyone and then you wait until you get put into a random group of five people to get into the group you need to make sure you have nothing on you so you can use these bank chests here in order to deposit all the items, the only thing you can take into a sinkhole is the Ring of Kinship. Once you are in a group, you can pick up one of the equipments off the side. So you've got the mage, range or melee. Once you've taken it once, you never have to take it again. So I've already got the mage, so I can run around with that. You want to pick up as much exploratory totems as you can and use AoE abilities as much as you can as well. So as soon as you enter a room, get the exploratory totems. Kill the mobs with AoE abilities, things like Chain, Fire Breath, all of that work really well. Pick up the combat totems you get, keep going through, try not to go through same doors as other people as you're competing against them. So pick up the exploratory totem, kill the mobs, just kill them as you normally would any other monster. Some of the mobs are easier than others and some drop cards, so pick up the cards they drop. These are really important, the treasure shoots, that allows you to deposit and get points up here. And as you can see on this, you have combat totems, exploratory totems and resources. The resources in this is mining, so you can mine the rocks for the resources. And you want to have at least one of every resource to get maximum XP from the lamps you obtain via sinkholes. The best things to give you points are exploratory and combat totems. So typically you want to kill as much things as you can and you want to collect as many exploratory totems as you can. The only thing is you need to hand them in in a certain amount of time. If you hand them in too late and it goes past the maximum amount, then you're going to have a bad time. You're not going to get all the points you normally would because you only get points up until the maximum amount. So if someone deposits them and then there's only six left and you have 12, you'll only get points for six rather than 12. As you can see right now, I have 380 score and I am currently second. So all you got to do is skill for the last part as all of the combat are done, all of the exploratory are done, just keep skilling until it's done. Once it hits 54 items on the skilling, it will go to the final stage and that's the chest. And in the final stage, that's where you get to use these cards. You cannot use more than one card in the final stage. 
So it's good to have multiple different cards that can benefit you. The two best cards in Dungeoneering, in my opinion, is Cloning Mosquito and Meerkats. Meerkats adds a medium lamp to your reward. So you literally just get a free medium lamp. And Cloning Mosquito clones the player behind you. So if you're in first place, you're guaranteed a huge lamp. This means that if someone steals your huge lamp from second place and you're first, your cloning mosquito will then clone your huge lamp back. And if they don't steal it, you can have a meerkats card and then the meerkats card can give you the extra medium lamp on your lamp. So you could technically leave with a huge lamp and a medium lamp, which is so much XP. And obviously you leave with some extra Dungeoneering tokens that are guaranteed. So I came first. I don't have a clone, so I'll say no clone. So then the person knows if they try and steal mine, I'm just going to steal it back with a trading leech card and it's not profitable for them. So now it plays from the last place to the first place. Last place used a yak in order to give themselves a guaranteed medium lamp as last place never normally keeps their chest. As you can see, that guy just leeched his. So now he's got a small lamp, he'll be guaranteed a medium one. And people typically just fight over the best rewards they can get. So this guy then just leached the large lamp over there and gave him the medium one. This guy will probably leech his because I said I don't have a clone. Or if he tries to take mine, I'll just take it back. So he leached his as well, which then leaves us completely open to be able to use a meerkats card. So our meerkats card can give us our medium lamp. And now we've got a huge lamp and a medium lamp, which means we can get so much XP in Dungeoneering just from this sinkhole. My huge lamp gave me 192,000 and my medium lamp gave me 81,000. This is during Dungeoneering weekend, so I'm getting 50% more. But I'm also level 115 Dungeoneering, so it scales with level. So now all you got to do is teleport to the sinkhole entrance. Click on the sinkhole, go back down, and you can do your second sinkhole of the day in the same lockout. Just enter it the exact same way and just wait. Typically, the second time you get in much quicker, which is awesome. And then it's just repeating the same process. You need to pick up the exploratory totems. Also, as you can see here, this locked chest gives you a card. So I pickpocket that locked chest and it gave me a cloning mosquito card. So that's great. If I come first again, I'll be able to clone someone's card. So because everyone's going that way, I'm not going to fight them over stuff. I'm going to go over here and start doing it on my own. That way I have more chance of getting all the combat totems and exploratory totems that are this way. Typically you don't want to fight people over resources because it's not going to end well for you or them. Give yourself the advantage by taking the initiative. You can't have more than five cards so it does get to the point where sometimes you want to delete some cards. So I don't want the trading mantis so I can destroy that. I won't want the whimsical bunyip card so I can destroy that. This way you can get the exact cards you want. There's two Smoke Devils cards on the floor. But I don't need Smoke Devils so I'll pickpocket this chest. It gave me another Colony Mosquito. You can't use two of the same cards so I'll also destroy that one. Deposit in my items allows me to make sure I've guaranteed got some points. And then back to getting some more totems. Picking them up in this room. Always pickpocket these locked chests to try and get your Meerkats cards and your Colony Mosquito cards. So as you can see, I still don't have a Meerkats card, although first place does get a free card. So if I try and aim for first place, I can get my free card. So if I trade these totems in, that's all of the combat and the exploratory totems done. So now it's just looking for the skilling ones. So the skilling one in this is wood. So you're looking around on the walls for skilling ones that are trees. So over here, there's a tree. I can wood cut this tree, get some of the wood and get ready to hand it in. And then it's just rinse and repeat in this process every time you do a sinkhole competing against other people. It's sometimes hard to consistently get first place in sinkholes. But if you get first or second nearly every sinkhole then you're going to be in a good position moving forward for XP lamps. Or if you want tokens they're typically harder to get because only one token reward is given at the end. Whereas four lamps are given in total. Although you do get those guaranteed tokens from just completing the sinkhole itself. So you're always going to get some tokens. You may not get the extra ones though. So as you can see I only got rank 3 in this one. Which is still okay. And I'll still be able to do some things with what I get. So typically me being in third place. I don't really have that many useful cards here. Except for maybe my trading leech card. This way I can leech off the player before me. But this guy has no clone, so them having no clone, they're probably going to steal my chest anyway. And then I'll end up with tokens. So I'm just going to smoke devil it. It gets people pretty angry and it's always a nice card to use. 
So in the end, I have a huge lamp and this guy's a medium lamp. He'll probably steal my huge lamp and then I'll still get a medium lamp, which is better than a small lamp or dungeoneering tokens for me personally. So he didn't even steal it, so I get a huge lamp, which is absolutely awesome. Smoke Devil worked in my favour this game. Not always will it work in your favour, but when you have nothing else to do, you might as well Smoke Devil. Or if you think if you're going to use a card that steals the person's, yours is going to get stolen, it's always a useful card to have. So again, the huge Dungeoneering Lamp gave me loads of Dungeoneering XP. Thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you're new for future guides and future content on this channel. You can join my French chat micro if you fancy a chat in game. You can join my clan Goblin Slayers, it's open to everyone and anyone. The Discord link will be in the description if you fancy voice chatting with me and anyone else on there. It's usually quite packed every day with loads of new faces and old faces alike. So if you enjoy chatting while playing RuneScape, feel free to join in. Let me know if you have any suggestions for future videos. I've been really enjoying my Skiller recently, so I'll probably up the amount of Smashing Skiller series videos I put out. So I'll put them out more often probably. I'm really, really enjoying that account and it's making me enjoy RuneScape even more. But either way, until next time, see ya.